I have a new video for you guys because we need to talk about Scott Disick. It's oddly become socially acceptable for Scott to go around and date women who are barely legal. His latest teenage girlfriend is 18 years younger than this father of three. It's pretty sick the pattern that Scott is showing, so I hope he settles down sometime soon. So let's go ahead and get into it. Today, I have a highly requested video for you guys because a lot of you asked me to look into Scott Disick. He has been dating a lot of young women these past few years, and today I'm not trying to frame him as a criminal, but we're going to talk about his relationship history because it's becoming more and more questionable as he gets older and the age becomes lower. I mean, he is a 38-year-old man, he's about to be 40 years old, and he is dating teenagers. We're going to be referring to a bunch of different articles about Scott, and before we get into his dating history, I want to talk a little bit about who he is as a person. Obviously, everybody knows Scott from the show Keeping Up with the Kardashians. He was dating Courtney at the time, and he gained fame from the show from being the goofball boyfriend and really displaying his relationship with Courtney for the world to see. But where did he really come from? Because I always thought that was like, um, he just like, you know, became famous out of nowhere. Like, where'd he get all that money? And he came from a lot of of it. It's not like he was a really famous family, but they were really wealthy because of his grandfather, David Dizick, who used to develop luxury properties. Also, Scott's father was a real estate developer, so he was really well off just from his parents alone. I'm not too sure if you guys used to watch the show back in the day or would even remember when Scott's parents passed away, but they both passed away when he was very like young and he was very, very torn up up about this. It kind of played out on the show, and I remember feeling so bad for Scott because he didn't really have a family outside of the Kardashians. It looks like Scott's mother, Bonnie, actually passed away in 2013. Again, I'm not too sure how she passed away. There's not too much information about them online. And unfortunately, his father, Jeffrey, passed away on January 3rd, 2014, less than a year after his mother. And I know that Scott was really torn up about all of this. Of course, he would be. And it's it's got to be tough losing both your parents. That's like one of the scariest things. I'm so like fearful one day. But let's go ahead and talk about his relationship with Courtney because she was pretty much the only age appropriate girlfriend he's ever really had. They dated from the year 2006 through 2015. They actually met in 2006 at a party in Mexico and that's when they hit it off and pretty much the rest is history. You guys know the story. Scott was on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Him and Courtney never really married because they never really seemed like fully committed to each other. That may be due to Scott's issues with substances and partying and not being a responsible father to his three children he has with Courtney. They actually broke up in July 2015 because Scott was partying a ton and he was seen with a much younger woman in 2015 out at the clubs. A source close to the family said that Scott wouldn't even go home even though people told him to go home and things were just very tense between him and Courtney. They claimed that Scott was terrified of facing the mother of his children so he's obviously really scared of Courtney for whatever reason, probably because he's guilty. I guess at this point in the relationship, it was really bad because he went from LA to Miami to continue partying. And the source said that Scott is not in a place to apologize. He knows 100% what he has done and the damage he has caused. He's not blind to that, but he doesn't want to face it, which sounds like a straight up coward to me. And after him and Courtney broke up, he just started becoming really interested in young women who were down to party. Party. This article lists a bunch of women that Scott has been linked with, like a Swedish model, Lena Sandberg, and another woman named Christine Burke back in 2016. He was really bouncing around in 2016. Actually, it looks like he dated one Australian model, Megan, in May 2016, and again in fall 2020. Then he dated another model or actress, Bella Banos, in early 2017, and again in fall 2020. So he likes to go back and forth with a bunch of these ladies. 
But someone who I was completely blindsided by while doing research on Scott was his relationship with Bella Thorne. I completely forgot that that happened. As you guys know, Bella Thorne is a Disney actress. Well, if you don't know, well, that's that's who she is. She's done music as well, and she's just pretty much famous for being famous at this point. We've made videos about her before on my channel because she's gone through some tough things in Hollywood, including dating Scott Disick. And honestly, that's not a joke. Bella actually revealed that the couple took a trip to France in May 2017, and she said she was never actually involved with him physically, but they were like dating for a little bit. I'm actually super surprised by this, but Bella told a reporter that actually Scott did too much partying for her. Scott is really nice, she said, sweet and charming. I don't drink, and he really drinks a lot. And it just ended. I just wasn't down. I was like, I gotta leave. I love to go out and have fun. I love to dance, but I don't like to party hardcore like that. And it was way too much for Bella Thorne. So like who could even handle that? But let's go ahead and talk about Sophia Richie because everyone was really uncomfy when they found out that Scott was dating this 19 year old. She also is the daughter of famous Lionel Richie and he actually had some things to say about this relationship. I mean, obviously like Courtney had a lot to say because she was very unhappy at the time, but her dad Lionel wasn't approving either. Lionel actually told in an article that he wasn't thrilled with their relationship, but he recognized that Sophia was an adult, so he had little say. He said, quote, she's 19. When you're 19, you know everything. Is it going to be for life? I don't know. But for right now, it's just a phase, and I'm going to stand real still in the corner, get me a good drink, and not make too much noise. Which, I don't know if I love this approach, but it obviously wasn't really a phase, because this couple was together for years and years, and I actually feel like Sophia probably doesn't really like Scott anymore, like even probably regrets her relationship with him. Scott does admit though that Sophia actually inspired him to become a better person. So maybe this young girl was able to teach this old dog how to live a normal life. He said, I think it's hard anywhere to find somebody that you can be comfortable with. And the truth was without her, I was always looking for somebody or something. There were also rumors that Scott and Sophia were planning on moving in together. I know that Scott and Sophia relationship was really extremely messy, especially towards the end of it, which makes sense because this guy is obviously super unstable. Kourtney Kardashian said at one point that she thinks that Scott and Sophia's fling is a little weird. A source told Us Weekly that Kourtney thinks this fling with Sophia is a little weird, but nothing shocks her anymore. Kourtney just wants Scott to be his old self. She shares three kids with him, so she'll always want the best for him and will always make sure he's happy. I actually came across this comment from Kendall Jenner, who is Courtney's little sister, and pretty much this page posted a, you know, photo of Scott with uh, Sophia and the children in the back, and actually Kendall commented, oh, Scott and his kids, pretty much like insinuating that uh, Sophia is just one of Scott's kids in the car with him, which is so gross. I can't really pinpoint why Scott and Sophia broke up, but I have a feeling it's because Scott was going back to his partying ways and probably like, you know, flirting with some other women. There are articles out there like this one titled Sophia Richie dumps Scott Disick after he cheats on her and flirts with another woman, another young woman. But at that time, Scott was denying everything and he actually made an Instagram story claiming that he and Sophia were together and that he had no idea they even broke up. But of course, all good things come come to an end, right? And honestly, I'm not even trying to joke about that. It's not a good thing. It's actually not a good thing at all because I kind of feel like this, even though Scott is with technically legal women, I kind of feel like it's a little bit of G-R-O-O, you know what I'm trying to say? The, you know, where like an older man like gets a young and vulnerable woman or it could be vice versa. It could be a woman and a man. But anyways, an adult and a vulnerable like person at, you know, at a young age is manipulated by them into becoming their partner. Something that I find disgusting about Scott and Sophia's relationship is that Scott definitely knew Sophia before she was an adult, like when she was 15 or 16 years old, because they were all family friends. So like, were they talking back 
then and waited until she was older. It's just so creepy that he was an adult hanging around her when she was just a minor. But the couple did end up breaking up last year in 2020 after three years of being together. So again, to Lionel Richie, like that was not a phase. Three years? Like that was pretty much like her early like teens, like 20. I don't know. She could have been thriving then, but Whatever, maybe she learned a lot, a life lesson. I found one article that kind of attributed their breakup to Courtney's treatment of Sophia. They claim that Courtney didn't make it easy for Sophia, and you can only tolerate that kind of treatment for so long. So I don't know if Courtney was just really awful to her, but she just wanted to get out. Now let's go ahead and talk about Scott's relationship with Amelia Hamlin, who is probably his youngest girlfriend yet. But before we move on to Amelia, I want to inform you guys that Sophia does not like Amelia at all. Supposedly, Sophia Ritchie unfollowed Scott Disick and Lisa Renna and all the Hamlin sisters on Instagram because she feels betrayed that Amelia is dating Scott because they were all like family friends. So super gross, and I'm I'm sure like Sophia is pissed because I would probably be pissed too. So here's Amelia, Scott's latest girlfriend, and actually the first time they were spotted together was at Kendall Jenner's Halloween party. So she was quickly introduced into the Kardashian lifestyle. She's of course the daughter of Lisa Renna, who is a real housewife of Beverly Hills. We've talked about her and her husband, Harry Hamlin, before on my channel. So definitely go check out that video if you have not seen it. But sources supposedly told People Magazine that the relationship between Amelia and Scott was getting very serious and the couple didn't feel the age difference between them. So weird. Probably because Scott acts really immature. You guys may have seen this, but they've engaged in quite a bit of PDA on social media. A little bit too much for my liking. You guys may remember there was that whole picture of like Amelia's behind. I'm definitely going to have to blur out this, but like if you have not seen this photo, it is so hard to look at just because like, oh my gosh, like it's so it's a lot, but also you think about like Harry Hamlin and like seeing this on the internet of his daughter and this like four-year-old dude like creepy dude posting it for everyone to see like he's kind of like showing her off you might be asking, what does Harry Hamlin and Lisa Renna think about this? Well, Lisa Renna has been pretty outspoken about their relationship. Let's go ahead and watch a little clip. Your first reaction when you found out that your daughter was dating uh, Scott Disick? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Have you talked to Chris Jenner about it? Have not. I just met him, yes. He's more handsome in person and he was very nice. We had a very nice we had a very nice time. He met Harry and there you go. Wow. There it is. It is what it is, guys. It is what it is. So she seems supportive. She also seems a little bit uncomfortable by it all. She did mention that Scott's like very handsome in person, which I have to say back in the day, I used to think he was handsome. But nowadays, I don't know what he did to himself, but he's just looking a little bit. I don't like to talk about like people's appearances, so it's fine. He looks fine. He looks healthy. But I just remember Scott back in the day and I was like, yeah. That was like the heartthrob back then. But people have been questioning his relationship with Amelia. This person on Twitter actually quote retweeted a story about the couple and tweeted out Amelia Hamlin is only four years older than Scott and Courtney's relationship. Like, oh my gosh. And honestly, Scott has an explanation for this, which actually I think this is incredibly toxic in him just justifying his really gross behavior and kind of society accepting it. In an article, Scott claims that he doesn't chase young ladies, but they chase him. The article writes that Scott Disick's apparent inclination to date women much younger than him is pure coincidence and not even his doing. So says the guy himself, who's got hell of an explanation. The Lord, they write, which I don't not like, I don't like how he's called the Lord because he's not a Lord. But anyways, Scott gave a little insight into to what seems to be a trend these past few years. Honestly, a trend I'm worried about, and that's kind of why I'm talking about this, because I really hope he doesn't go down the path where he is only with, like, barely legal women for the rest of his life. 
But anyways, the last two women who he has dated has been about 20 years younger than him, give or take. And of course, they're talking about Sophia Ritchie and his current boo, Amelia Hamlin. They start off talking about Sophia Ritchie and how she's currently 22 years old, but they met when she was 19 years old. And actually, that's how old Amelia is, Scott's current girlfriend. During one of the Keeping Up with the Kardashians reunion, Andy Cohen asked Scott Disick about this. At that reunion, Scott denies that he goes after young women specifically, but notes that there is some sort of pursuit happening, although apparently it's the other way around. Scott, what's up with him dating much younger women? Everybody gets this wrong that I look for young girls. Okay. I don't go out looking for young girls. Okay. They happen to be attracted to me because I look young. You tell him, Scott. Do you, you give your blessing to Scott and Amelia? Yeah. Whoever would make him happy. Like Whoever would make I him would happy. I would give my blessing. As for Scott and Amelia nowadays, it actually looks like they're taking a step further with their relationship and they're actually moving in together. Supposedly, they're moving into the Hamptons and they're going to have Scott Disick's kids there and they're just going to be a whole little family without Courtney, which is so bizarre because what like 19 year old, 20 year old Amelia Hamlin wants to go and mother these three children. Of course, they're going to have tons of nannies on staff. Like imagine Scott with his children alone, but still like we that like Amelia is going to be like that stepmommy role. Supposedly, they're in the process of scouting places in the Hamptons to see what their options are. The article also talks about how Amelia has been able to spend more time with the kids recently and is embracing it. She's learning a lot, which again, why is she trying to learn how to be a mother of these kids? Like what? A source said it's a whole different world for her, which makes sense. Like what? But she loves being around them and is grateful she gets to have this experience experience. She thinks they're amazing and is really good with them. Her and Scott love planning fun activities with them, which again, like, I'm trying to think about the children. Like, are they going to have like a little bit of issues with having these random people all around? But thinking again, they are Kardashians, so they probably have so many nannies and so many workers. And it's like, oh, well, this is just another one of Scott's girlfriends. And I guess like seeing these people come and go all the time is just normal for them, but it definitely cannot be good for them. You guys may be wondering, why are people even talking about this relationship? Well, they're making themselves relevant and they're pushing it in everyone's faces. Pictures like the one I showed you earlier of her backside and ones like this are just a little bit awkward to see because we know the huge age difference and we know that Scott's also just a really immature guy and that it's probably like not going to be his last teenage young girlfriend and it makes me concerned for not only like her Amelia but other women who are going to be dating this guy because there's definitely something a little bit unstable and I don't know if like Sophia signed an NDA or if she would even have any stories about him but like if he's still partying at this rate and like still interested in such young vulnerable mature, like immature women then I feel like there's got to be some problems going on in his mind. Actually Sophia's mother Lisa Renna has been a little bit more open about her feelings about Scott and she's really nervous about their relationship which I would be too. In a new episode from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, they're of course dragging the relationship into the show, probably for another storyline, and supposedly Lisa Renna was like, okay, come on, right? Like, come on. Pretty much just like questioning why this relationship is a thing from the start. However, Amelia's father, Harry Hamlin, has supposedly been more calm about it. This next part is a little bit sick. I'm going to give you a quick, quick trigger warning, but pretty much... Lisa said that she's actually happy about Amelia Hamlin getting all of this press with her relationship with Scott because now the press isn't talking about her ED. So as a mother, she's like, good, this gives her another label to deal with, which I feel like isn't a great way to look at this. It's kind of disgusting to look at this like, oh, now nobody's like looking at this one problem because she's got an even bigger problem here. So let's just act like the ED doesn't exist, which is really bad for her health. Lisa also said in this episode that it's probably a phase for Amelia and Scott, which we have heard about this before. And supposedly she doesn't want to bring attention to it, but she's also talking about it on her show. There's articles released every single day. So I don't know if like Scott is cashing in on this relationship. I don't know if, you know, Lisa Renna is or E! News or what's going on. But there's something very toxic here, and it's really bizarre to me that she's talking about trying to distract from her daughter's ED with 
a relationship with a man that's 18 years older than her. From the research I did online, it doesn't look like Scott Disick has done anything illegal, which is amazing. Thank God, because there are so many creeps in Hollywood. But... He is creepy, like you have to admit that. And I just wanted to kind of talk about his relationship with these young women like Bella Thorne and we got Sophia and now Amelia. And I just feel like this might be a pattern that's going to continue. And I don't think that their relationships are all that great. Maybe it's good for Scott. Maybe he's benefiting from it, but I just feel like there's something weird here. And that's why so many people are asking, why is he with all these young girls? But if you guys have anything you want me to talk about, here's my email below. Feel free to reach out to me. I do have a P.O. Box package item to open. It looks like it's from Aria Creations Art. And it looks like she is in the United States. So let's go ahead and see what she sent me. Thank you so much. I actually went to the P.O. Box today. And I was so excited to see what you sent. So let's see what this is. Um, let's see if there's a card. Oh, it looks like there's a card right Ooh. Okay, hold up. <gasps> Things are flying out. Things are flying out. Ooh. Okay, okay. So it looks like she's got a card right here, which, oh my gosh, she's got a card with a charm on it. Like, how bougie is that? And everything will be listed below for her social medias and her company. And it looks like it's, ooh, crystal jewelry. I'm so excited. So let's go ahead and see what her card says. Thank you for promoting me. I hope you heart your new crystals to wear and protect you. Oh, thank you so much. I need protection. That's why I've been wearing this cross a lot. And then she also sent this. I made you some Howlite skull earrings. Oh, hope your ears are pierced. Oh no, they're not pierced, but that's okay. I can definitely re-gift them. Um, a Howlite necklace and a Cladony ring. I'm sorry, I cannot read like cursivish. Cladony, Cladony. Thank you so much, Aria, and everything will be listed below. Let's go ahead and see what she sent me. Yeah, like I, I don't have my ears pierced, but these are really cool, so I know my sister's going to love them. Um, so let's go ahead and see. So here are the, ooh, and the ring looks like actually decently big, which is good because maybe it'll fit like on my pinky or something. <laughs> you guys know I have like a size like 14, 15 ring. So here are the earrings. They're so cute. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to give them to my mom or my sister or something. Love those. And then she gave me this ring, which looks pretty big, which I'm excited for because usually rings are really small. <gasps> okay, so yeah, I can definitely fit on my pinky. That's what I was saying, guys. Like, it could literally fit on my pinky. And it's probably, like, the largest one, which is cool. But that's just, oh, I love the ring, though. Like, it looks, still looks good, even on the pinky. My huge hands. Like, I don't know why I was cursed with these because um, it's so hard for me to find jewelry. But this is so cool. And I'm sure she can make it, like, custom, like, bigger if she needed to because it is, like, a wrap. So, like, I would literally be, like, a size, like, 16, which is, yeah, not hard to, or not easy to find. And then let's go ahead and look at the, oh, here it is, the necklace, which I'm so hyped for. Thank you so much. And the packaging is very nice. Like, I love this packaging. Oh, my gosh. And, oh, wow, this is so pretty. Look at this. Hold on. You need to see it like on the shirt so i guess this is that one stone that i don't think i can pronounce and it's a really cool like crystal stone with a wrap so thank you so much i really appreciate this definitely go check out aria's shop and support small businesses and i will see you guys in a new video soon ah thank you so much bye guys